and welcome to vlog number four. Um, I can't believe it, we've got to 21 subscribers, so thanks to all of you who have subscribed. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at the Shimano uh, Megura hybrid system, Shigura or Shakira or something like that. Um, I'm going to be going into the why you'd want to do that in the first place, um, what bits you need to be able to do that, and then I'm going to go into the, the real depth of how you do it, uh, step by step, hopefully not missing anything out. So if you wanted to follow along, you can. Um, and then if you just want to see me fall off my bike, then there's some clips at the end of me testing out the um, setup and falling off my bike. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Why would you change the lever on a perfectly good brake for a Shimano one? Um, well, chances are it's not a perfectly good brake because you've broken this lever. Um, Megura's philosophy is that you have all the weight in the caliper um, and get a really nice stiff caliper which gives you good braking performance and save the weight in the lever. Um, unfortunately, the lever is quite weak uh, and does break, bits pop off apparently. Um, it happened to me on my back brake lever, it cracked across here when I was just pulling quite hard on the lever, it just cracked across here. Um, I've lost confidence with them so I won't be using them again. Um, but um, yeah, it's because this part of the lever is made out of plastic impregnated with carbon fiber filaments um, and then injection molded. Um, and it's probably quite a cheap way of doing this part in mass production. So it keeps the cost down and it's quite lightweight. Um, but unfortunately, it's just not up to the job if you ask me. Um, they, they need a bit more material or they need to make it a different way. Um, which is unfortunate because other than that, it is a good brake system. Um, but the Shimano levers are also mineral oil based and um, they are compatible, although they won't tell you that. Uh, and personally, I think the Shimano levers feel really good and I like the way they work. Um, so I've got the Saint levers, but this will also work with other models. Um, the higher end models do have this thing called Servo Wave, which if you can see here, there's a an S shaped channel that as you squeeze the lever, it it changes the pivot point um, for the uh, for the lever, so it changes the lever ratio throughout the stroke. So it ch starts off um, more subtly to give you that modulation, and then ramps up. Um, and I find it works really well. I like the feel of it, but it is a bit of a, a personal preference thing. Um, but maybe you're looking to do this because. Um, you can't get hold of a Megura lever, which could well happen when you're somewhere where they haven't, they don't supply it. Um, so this is good to know for that. What you will need is obviously the Shimano lever, the Megura setup that you've already got, um, and then these three little things. So you've got this barbed piece, which is different for different Shimano levers. So I'll put a link in the description to list all the Shimano levers. Um, and which barb to get. There's two different types of barbed um, bits. Uh, so for the Saint, it's the BH90, which I've got here. And the difference is the internal bore. Um, and I think it can affect the performance of the brake if you use the wrong one. So um, make sure you get the right one. So check that out. Um, and uh, a new olive, because it's always best to get a new olive each time, um, because they, the idea of the way it works is they deform a little bit. Um, and then this um, nut here as well, because my uh, second hand lever didn't come with one, so I've got that as well. Um, on top of that, a few tools you'll need is um, some clamp blocks for the hose, something to cut the hose with, um, some kind of way of holding the, um, the clamp blocks and a hammer to tap the barbed bit in. If you've got a, a vise, then that would probably be better if you can get that near the system while you're doing it. Um, uh, a spanner for the, the nut for the lever, um, a few different Allen keys here. I've got the five and the four mil for um, working with the, the lever and fitting the um, caliper on. And then this, um, I think it's two and a half mil for taking off this little bleed um, screw here for doing the bleeding. And then this small um, Allen key, doesn't need to be an Allen key, but that's for on Shimano levers. There's a small hole you push here um, and that lets this part of the um, the clamp flap open uh, and I, I always forget it's there so um, hopefully that's useful to someone as well because um, it can be quite frustrating um, and it just means that you don't have to take your um, grips off and things. 
um, and obviously you need your um, mineral oil and the Shimano bleed kit to do it. Um, there's also one thing that I haven't got on the table here, a Megura M6 barb fitting. Fortunately I already had one, um, I'm not sure if they come with the brake or if you have to get a bleed kit to get one. Let's get to it. Firstly, if you haven't already, fit your caliper. Right, now cut the hose nice and close to the lever and make sure you're using something that gives a nice clean cut. Now I'm just routing the hose through the steer tube. Once you've pulled all the hose through, you can slide the top cap back on and screw that into place. As I said before, Shimano levers have this little button you can press that allows the clamp to swing open, which means that you don't need to take the uh, grips and shifter off your bars. Um, now you want to position the lever at an angle so that the top bleed screw is horizontal with the floor. Now you want to position the hose roughly where it's going to be to work out where to cut it. I'd recommend cutting it a little bit long um, just so you've got a second chance if um, everything doesn't go quite according to plan and you need to redo it. If you've got the rubber boots for the levers then slide those on first. I haven't got them so I'm sliding on the hose nut first followed by the new olive and now you want to get the clamp blocks for the hose. Now there's a few different ways of holding these clamp blocks. You can clamp it in a vise or you can clamp it in between some grips like I am and you just want to push the barbed connector insert into the hose. You won't be able to push it all the way in. Um, I'm using a hammer to tap it in um, but you might be able to push it up against a wall or the side of your workbench to get it all the way in but um, I found in the past that I needed a hammer. Now position the hose into the lever and slide the olive in first followed by the hose nut. You'll be able to screw that in by hand to start with but then you will need to put a spanner onto it. Uh, technically you should be using a torque of between 5 and 7 newton meters. Now I'm guessing most people won't have a torque wrench for doing this so I will say it needs to be quite tight because what you're doing is you're crushing that brass olive onto the hose so you do need to do it quite tight but don't over tighten it because obviously you can strip the thread in the lever body. Now for the bleeding, first of all remove your wheel um, because you don't want to get any fluid on the disc. I haven't got the correct bleeding blocks for this caliper so I've put some old pads in and I'm going to put some disc spacers in. Um, obviously these brake pads will be for the scrap bin afterwards because they're going to get contaminated with any fluid that drops onto them. Now fill your syringe full of mineral oil, it doesn't matter if you're using Shimano or Megura. I'm doing this to a new brake so I'm not concerned about the two mineral oils mixing but if you were doing this on an older system you might want to push a full syringe of fluid through and then reconnect and um, bleed with another. Here's a pro bleed tip for you. Sometimes your mineral oil can become aerated in the container you keep it in, especially if you've had it in the boot of your car on the way to a race or something. And the way to resolve this is when you pull a syringe out, if you put your finger over the end and then pull the syringe, you're creating a vacuum and it will pull the air out of the liquid. You can see here that when I pull the syringe back, some very small bubbles appear in the liquid and they rise to the surface. So um, if you're really having is issues with um, bleeding your brakes then this could be a good trick to help resolve it. Now remove the caliper bleed port screw. I recommend having the syringe close to hand to minimise how much fluid is lost. Use an 8mm spanner to ensure that this is on tight.
Now remove the bleed port screw from on top of the brake lever. Now keep this somewhere safe and don't lose or damage the little o-ring seal on it. Now you want to install the Shimano bleeding kit funnel. This is fragile so be careful not to cross thread it or over tighten it. Now slowly push a full syringe of fluid through the system. You should see it starting to appear at the funnel. Now squeeze the lever several times. You're trying to get the air bubbles out of the system so keep squeezing it and um, you also want to give the cables a good tap with a spanner. All of these things will help dislodge any air pockets or bubbles that you might have in the system. Give the lever a few more squeezes um, and keep repeating this process until no more bubbles appear in the funnel on top of the brake lever. Draw the fluid back through the system again with the syringe. This will help um, pick up any kind of air pockets that might be trapped um, and help dislodge them and then push the fluid back through the system. Just make sure you don't pull back too far with the syringe that you end up introducing um, air back into the lever itself. Now place the plug in top of the Shimano bleed funnel and now remove the syringe. Make sure you've not got any air in the syringe tube um, and you need to be quite quick replacing the caliper bleed port screw. Make sure you don't lose too much fluid. Um, hopefully putting the plug in the funnel will help um, stop the fluid just pouring out. Um, but you do need to still be quite quick. Now remove the plug from the funnel. Give the lever a few more squeezes. And replace the plug into the funnel. Now you can remove the funnel. Um, this little Shimano funnel does come with a little stand that you can put it in when it's full. Um, so have that close by and you can stand it in that while you put the lever bleed port screw back in. Again, be careful not to damage the o-ring on this. Now it's time to clean off any spillages that you've had with the fluid. It's really important to make sure that you remove any fluid from the caliper or the lever because it could potentially contaminate the pads and the disc. Unfortunately, I forgot to record um, taking the pads out, um, but I did have to push the brake pads and pistons back in a bit to um, get the pads out. Um, I used a knife to do this, but um, obviously that's not recommended, but I wasn't planning on reusing these disc brake pads anyway, so it didn't really matter. Now, pump the lever several times. Um, you'll find the more you do it, the kind of earlier the bite point comes and you keep doing that until it feels about right. Um, it's totally normal for it to not feel right straight away. So don't worry if it um, feels really spongy to start with. Now reposition your lever into the position that you would normally have it when you're riding. Now if the pads are rubbing on the disc then you'll need to loosen the uh, caliper bolts, uh, pull on the brake um, to centre the caliper on the disc and then tighten up the bolts again. Um, you may need to do a little bit of fiddling around to get it so it's um, not rubbing at all. Right, so that's the brake fitted and bled. Uh, next I'm going to go out and uh, bed the brake pads and disc in because they're new. Um, I found the best way to do this is to go and find a hill near you, take some clean fresh water with you, squirt it onto the caliper and the disc when you're at the top of the hill, ride down the hill as fast as you can, pull the brake on and come to a stop um, and then go back up the hill, repeat this and do that a few times. You'll find that your braking distance will get shorter and you'll feel the consistency of the brake getting sharper and, um, and much better. Um, really important to do this. I think it makes a really big difference. Um, if you're getting new discs, new pads, or you're cleaning them, um, then 
definitely do that every time because it does make a big difference and it will make the, the next ride you go on more enjoyable. Um, I'm looking forward to going and take this bike out for a play now. So straight after fitting this brake, I took it out for a quick play and took the camera with me. Um, I have so much fun riding this bike. I don't ride it that often these days. So um, excuse some of the bad riding and me falling off, but I hope you enjoy the edit anyway. you enjoyed that um, if you think I've missed anything out then please leave a comment in the section below um, and if you did enjoy it then do click the like button and subscribe to the channel and you'll hopefully see some more videos coming soon <laughs>